Now it's time to take a look at photo painting. There are three types of photo painting, cloning, auto painting, and AI style. Cloning allows you to create artwork by painting with the color and detail of a clone source. Auto painting and AI style can create the artwork and brushes for you. You just choose how you want the end result to look. Because it's not essential to my painting technique, I won't go too in depth into photo painting, but I will do my best to summarize what these features can do. You can find all of the photo painting properties in the photo art palette drawer. There is also a photo art command bar, which has some helpful shortcuts. I'll keep both of these open. To begin a clone painting, I like to start with a new canvas. I'll choose a standard print and frame size of eight by 10 inches at 300 PPI. Next, I'll go to file place, and I'm going to select an image I want to paint from. I'll choose the file called clone source and click open. I'll scale the image to 105% so it fills the canvas. Then I'll arrange the image wherever I like. Imagine that this is how your final painting will be composed, but it will look more like art than a photo. If I want to, I can even add in additional images to make a composite, but I'll keep things simple for now and just clone from a single source. Before you start painting, you may also want to edit the brightness or color of your source image to make it more artsy. You could do this using the effects in the photo art command bar, like adjust color, or you can use the underpainting panel. The underpainting panel is normally grouped with all of the cloning panels, but I have it located elsewhere. This panel can be used to quickly edit an image without having to go to the effects menus. As you can see, I can brighten the image and modify the colors to get it looking closer to my vision of the final painting. There are also handy photo enhance presets that can increase the contrast or saturate the image. You can even save your own presets. There are even a few color scheme presets which will drastically alter the colors in the clone source to make it look more artistic. You have the option of adding a smart blur if the image is too sharp, and you can feather the edges of the composition with the edge effect to create rectangular, circular, and jagged vignettes. You can apply these settings to the current document or create a new clone document from these settings. Once you click apply, these are destructive edits, so they're going to be permanent unless you undo. I think the clone source looks okay without any effects, so I will reset the modifications and hide the panel. Now that the basic layout of our clone painting has been established, we'll need to load this image as a clone source. You can do that in a couple of different ways. First, from the clone source palette, you can choose a clone source embedded image, and then select current document. Or you can go to quick clone from the photo art command bar. That will automatically set up a new document for cloning with the current composition as the clone source. I'll quick clone and discard the layout composition. You can see that the source appears within the clone source panel as an embedded image, and a new canvas has been created with those same dimensions. The tracing paper has also been toggled on which has made the image a bit fainter. This allows you to see the clone source while painting on top of it. You'll also notice that a cloner brush has been automatically selected. In order to clone, you need to paint with a cloner brush. The cloners category has a lot of great brushes, but you can also make a cloner out of just about any brush. We'll take a look at how to do that later. Let's show the compact brush selector so you can preview the variety of looks you can get from cloners. Currently, the bristle blender cloner is selected, and if I start to paint on the canvas, you'll see some of the colors from the clone source are picked up. You'll be able to see the true colors by hiding the tracing paper overlay. I have customized the shortcut to be T, but it is normally Control T, which I have assigned to Free Transform. There's also a button for it in the clone source palette. As you're working, you can toggle the tracing paper on and off as needed. It may be easier to see what you're doing if you adjust the opacity of the tracing paper. When I paint on the sky, I get blue. When I paint on the sunset, I get orange. The strokes look bristly, and the paint blends with the white of the canvas to give me a hand-painted effect. I will cover the white of the canvas with a large brush to block in the painting. Then I'll use a smaller brush to paint over specific objects or areas of similar color. For example, only on the water, the sky, and the land. For the most natural looking results, Use large brushes for large areas and small brushes for small areas. You will also want to create sharpness and contrast by painting in the areas where different objects or colors meet. 
This is going to take a lot of brush work and you won't have the natural breaks associated with changing your brushes and color. So if your hand starts to fatigue, take a rest. You can also change the angle of the canvas to a more comfortable angle. Eventually, what you'll end up with, depending on how much work you put into it, is a painting that looks like a photograph or a photograph that looks like a painting. I was able to get something decent in maybe 10 minutes or so. New to Painter 2021 is Clone Tinting. This allows you to add color to your clone source while you're painting. For example, I'll choose the Oily Thin Bristle Brush from the new Clone Tinting Brush category, and I'll show the Clone Color Palette. I'll uninvert the pressure expression, and I'll select a color to paint with. Although the color picker looks inactive, it will come to life when you hover over it. I'll choose a blue-gray color, and when I paint over the foreground with heavy pressure, I can replace the color while retaining the luminance detail from the clone source. Lighter pressure allows you to blend the selected color into the clone source color. You can control the maximum amount of tinting with the amount slider. As you can see, I'm able to expand upon the original photo and alter the colors to fit my vision of the painting. When cloning, you are not limited to working with a single clone source. You can utilize multiple clone sources and switch between them as needed. For example, I'll change my clone source to a texture called dirt and fit it to the foreground. When I paint, I'm cloning from the luminance of that texture. If I want more control over how the clone source blends with the underlying layers, I can adjust the opacity of the brush to 60%. Now when I paint on the foreground, my two images mix together to create a unique texture. If I want something more elaborate than a texture or pattern, I can also choose another embedded image. You'll want this image to fit your entire canvas, so you may need to edit the image first to make it an appropriate size. To do this, you can place an image into your current composition. I'll bring in the glow template, and then I will scale it up to 300%. I'll dim the opacity of the layer and arrange it where I want it to be. Then I will select all, copy, and paste in new image. I can save this image if I might want to reuse it at this size, otherwise I can discard it when I'm finished embedding it. I'll return to my clone painting, and from the bottom left of the clone source palette, we can embed the new source image. Embedding means the clone source will be preserved inside of the RIF file when you save. I can choose Browse to locate an image, but since the source I want is already open, I can choose that instead. Now a different image is loaded as the clone source. I'll delete the temporary glow layer and press T to show and hide the new clone source. I'll right click on these layers to rename them Beach and Space. We can switch between the two different clone sources by clicking on them. With space selected, I'll select the soft tint cloner brush and I'll paint with a dark blue gray color near the top of the sky. I'll fade some of that space source down into the sunset sky using a large brush with varied pen pressure. This creates an interesting composite. So far, I have only cloned from images with a background, but you can also use an image with a transparent background as your clone source. I'll select Texture as the clone source, and I'll import the moon image. This is a PNG with a transparent background. I'll click the Show Texture button, and then I'll transform it to get it sized and placed where I'd like it. Then I will create a new layer and clone the moon into the composition using the soft tint bristle brush with orange and blue colors. Because transparency is supported, I can paint on the background and nothing will happen. For an explanation of how to create an image with a transparent background, see the lesson about the canvas. Since the moon was cloned onto its own layer, I can move it around freely and use the composite methods to blend it with the underlying layers. In order for your cloner brushes to work, your canvas needs to be linked to the clone source. The easiest way to do this is to embed a clone source, which we have already done. If you do not embed your clone source, when you reopen the composition, you will have to manually relink the source before you can continue cloning from it. Because the embedded images are saved within the RIF file, the size of the clone source will be added to the file size of the rest of the composition. If conserving space is a concern, don't load up your documents with excessive embedded images. Alternatively, if you plan to reuse a lot of the same clone sources for multiple compositions, 
you can also import them as textures instead. That would take up less space because you wouldn't have a bunch of the same images embedded in separate documents. However, adding clone sources to the texture library adds to the file size of your workspace. Clone sources and textures don't have to be permanent. If you're through with a source image, you can delete it to save space. I'll delete the space source and the moon texture. Now I can no longer clone from these sources, but the paint I generated from them still remains on the canvas. The clone color panel lets you enable and disable clone color, which toggles cloning on and off for a brush. If I turn off clone color for this brush, now when I paint, I can use any color I like. I'll paint with the sky color over the shadows of the moon to make it look more distant. You can toggle clone color on and off from the color picker as well, or with the keyboard shortcut of U. It's not uncommon to be typing a layer name that has a U in it and accidentally turn on clone color mode. If your color is not working as expected, then look up in the properties bar. And if you see clone source, you'll know you're stuck on cloning. You can disable it by pressing U again. Just as well, you can enable clone color for brushes that are not cloners. I'll select the smooth palette knife and enable clone color. Now I get the character of this brush with the color of the clone source. Beneath that is a checkbox to toggle clone tinting on and off for a brush. Some of these properties can be found in the clone color flyout as well. The rest of the properties in this panel, as well as the clone method and restoration panels are for advanced cloning. You can learn more about these from the Painter Help Guide. While it's possible to convert an existing brush into a cloner by enabling clone color, you can also use the method called cloning. This has a few different subcategories that can give different looks to your cloner brush. I'll create a custom brush by changing the dab type to dynamic speckle bristle and adding the cloning method. I'll set the dynamic speckle count and size to 20%, and that produces a cloner with dynamic speckle properties. This is a straight cloner, which means that it will directly transfer the clone source. If I compare this to a dynamic speckle brush with clone color enabled, you can see that the media of the brush is just drawing its color from the clone source. I'll set this brush to the cloning method, and I will demonstrate some of the subcategories. Soft cover and hard cover give you softer or sharper details respectively. Grainy soft and hard cover can utilize paper grain. You'll need to choose a paper with some contrast and set grain to an appropriate value to see the effects of the grain. Some brushes may give you a straight clone even if they are only using clone color. For example, I can create a thick paint bristle brush and enable clone color. When I paint, I nearly get a straight clone, but with the character of thick paint. I can increase the visible depth to make it look thicker. If I want my cloning to have a watercolor appearance, I can choose watercolor flow particles and enable clone color. In order to print or share your clone painting on the web, you'll need to save a copy by going to Save As. While you must save your original as a RIF, you can save a copy as another format. Next, let's take a look at how to edit an embedded clone source image. You may want to do this to change the appearance of the clone source after it has already been embedded. With the beach source selected, I'll choose Show Source Image from the Clone Source panel. This will open the clone source as a separate image. If I try to apply Adjust Colors to it, a warning message appears letting me know that I'm about to modify the embedded source image. This is making sure that you understand that if you do change that source image, that's going to affect the embedded version in your composition. I'll click on OK, and then I will shift the hue a bit. Now if I go back to my clone composition, I get another message asking what I want to do with the current clone source. I can create a new clone source with the changes I made. I can update the existing clone source with those changes, or I can discard the changes to the clone source. In any case, the layers are flattened. If you want to preserve the layers in your clone source, you can go to File, Export Source Image, and save as a layered format like TIFF. When you return to the clone painting, you'll want to create a new embedded image. Now I have the alternate version of the clone source embedded, but I can also open the original RIF file to make changes. In addition to the cloning brushes, there is also a cloner tool. I explained what this can do in the lessons about the toolbox. 
So I won't cover that again. In the cloning preferences, you can find some options for cloning. For instance, you can choose what happens when you create a quick clone. We can also choose to automatically apply an AI style preset when a quick clone is created. This will make more sense when we explore AI style later in this lesson. You can watch the second half of this lesson along with the rest of this course by purchasing it from my website at aaronrutten.com.